HOK Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. HOK Infosys supports 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so the purpose of uh, uh, understanding Tomcat, understanding web framework is to start servlets and we are going to start today. So today we are going to write our first servlet. What is servlet and what is the definitions of it and how it works? So we are going to go through some introductory materials and then we'll start writing the code. So Java servlets. Servlets are programs that run on the web or application server and act as a middle layer between request coming from the web browser, request coming from web browser or other HTTP client. HTTP is a protocol, is a communication protocol. Okay, protocol is a set of rules. It's a hypertext transfer protocol. Okay, HTTP client and databases or applications on HTTP server. Okay, so any um, uh, any way of interaction for the web browser to the web application is servlet. Okay. Okay. Using servlets, you can collect the input from user through web pages, forms, present the records from the database to other source and create web pages dynamically. That we're gonna learn. Okay, so this is what we're gonna learn. Okay, using servlets, you can collect the inputs. So we are going to collect the input from uh, web pages and get it into Java. And once we have it in the Java, we can run the business logic on it, probably save it into database do some logic, call something else, so all sort of stuff. So the most important thing is collecting that input and converting it to the Java. See here how it looks. Web browser uses HTTP protocol. Protocol is a set of rules. Protocol is a previously defined language. Okay, That particular language is used to communicate between these two heterogeneous applications because web server do not understand anything else than um, computers and web browser is something which is English language right so web browser understand HTML and this guy understands probably Java ASP.NET and all sort of stuff so HTTP protocol is responsible for diverting this request uh, to HTTP server and HTTP server this is something which is our Tomcat Okay, so this is where our Tomcat lies and the Tomcat actually initiates servlet program which will take the input parameters from protocol and then translate everything into Java. Probably there will be another layers here. It's not directly interacting with database. It might be interacting with some other business layers also. Okay. So next diagram gives more detail view. This is a client, HTTP browser client explicit data okay explicit data meaning the data which user needs to pass through this html form okay so probably let's say you are creating a customer you are creating you are buying some item okay you are giving description of that item or give, give description of address zip code or all, all sort of stuff so you are sending that data okay and implicit http request so http request has some implicit means already included you do not have to mention that okay so that implicit HTTP request data is um, we can say bundled together and sent it for uh, so, so this is our web server okay where servlet is hosted and sent it for processing and once that processing is done our servlet sends the response back which has explicit data again which can be HTML and documents whatever requested by user and implicit HTTP response okay HTTP response tags okay so two the important things we're gonna learn HTTP request and HTTP response okay plus we'll also understand how to parse this how to understand how to get the parameters from this HTML form and how to send the response also okay so this is where the servlet rise and this is what servlet do 
life cycle of a servlet. So before even that, let's write a servlet. So I will just create one servlet. For that, I will create one package in our SRC folder in a dynamic web project. So just right click that SRC. Go to new package. Web dot first, and I'm creating my. And now I'm just writing a class C here. I'm not um, running any logic, which is or no, not creating any with uh, no other wizards. There are wizards for servlets. We're gonna use it later. Okay, as of now, just use a normal class. So I'm just using this as a test servlet, or let me mark it as a first servlet. Okay, that uh, this is more logical. And I will not choose anything else. I'll just say finish. To make this guy as a servlet, I have to extend something. That extends is HTTP servlet. It comes from Java X dot servlet dot HTTP. Okay. So just an extension. This is it. This is actually a complete servlet. Okay, although this will not do anything else, this will just be a servlet uh, in the JVM. It will not act as anything. So, for to act something, uh, you need to write a method in the servlet class. So, three important methods you need to understand for servlet lifecycle. So, whenever Tomcat initializes a servlet, Whenever Tomcat initializes or creates a servlet, just like a normal class is loaded into JVM with the constructor, okay, you remember constructor? Constructor actually initializes all the variables. It is like a initialization of a class. You use new keyword and all. You know that you cannot, you you do not do that for servlets, okay? Why? Because you don't initialize servlet, okay? That is also one of the fact I will tell you that you don't create an instance of servlet. Tomcat does. Tomcat actually initializes a servlet. Okay, so now when Tomcat initializes servlet, Tomcat do not do a constructor initialization. Of course, you can write a constructor, but there is another way of initialization for the servlet. So that initialization method is called init. Okay, so that init method is something like this. So public void init. So this is what Tomcat calls to initialize a servlet. Okay, so you can actually have some important initializations, probably some variables or something like let me have a variable here. So private string introduce. And I'm not initializing that and I'm using it here and saying introduce equals to Generally, this is normal custom to write this dot introduce equals to. Okay, that means my current instance. I am post servlet. And so I would introduce. Okay, and you can also say that you are in the init method. Okay, so init method is somewhere something which servlet uses to initialize the variables, initialize servlet itself. Okay, just like constructor. You can have constructors in servlet, I am not against that, but uh, with, with whatever you want to uh, initialize, generally we use that, we use init method for servlets, okay. Then comes the service methods, okay. We're going to learn that later. Service methods are which actually do the task which servlet is intended to do, okay. So let's go back to the material. A servlet lifecycle can be defined as uh, entire process from its creation till its destruction. And following are the paths followed by the servlet. The servlet is initialized by calling init method. Okay, so init method is called 
okay now for entire life of the servlet this service method is responsible to serve the client okay forever the servlet class service method to the pro, uh, method to process a client request so all the client requests will be processed by service method so this service method is actually not declared as this service okay it actually depends on what http method used by the client now http has a different methods okay so as i said that http is a protocol you can mention what kind of activity you are doing with that http okay so what kind of activities are available so when you are sending a request with http we can you can ask for information with the help of http get okay you can send some information uh, for saving with http post okay you can ask a header information like what exactly this entire request contains if you don't want to actually look into the request just a header information you can ask for head okay you can ask for delete delete some resource like if you want to delete a file okay you can ask for put you can put some file on the server okay you can ask for options okay this is very rarely used and finally trace so these are uh, eight i think seven different http methods so these are http methods nobody gonna ask you so 99% of the times you gonna use http get and http post okay for every http method the service method is defined with the do so for get it's do get for post it's do post okay for head is do head for delete is do delete for put it's do put for options do options for trace do trace okay so for every http method there is a service method with do now most commonly you're gonna end up calling do post or do get either you will get the data from the server or you will insert the data into database with the help of post method what's the difference between that we're gonna see it in detail so let's understand this service methods and write one of them so as 99 percent of the time we're going to use get and post let's write one of the method in our servlet so that that is do get do get what did i do just write do get control space it will give you an option of overriding from http servlet so this is my parent class i am just overriding from there okay so now let's understand this do get method it is protected in http servlet you can make it public okay overriding rules you cannot restrict the visibility you can actually widen the visibility you know that right okay so now the, you can see this public or protected why do not return anything do get the method name and it has two parameters this is these parameters are important the first parameter is http servlet request so this is what our first diagram shows this guy so this http request is coming with http servlet request object okay and the second one is http servlet response this object http implicit http response object so whatever response you want to send you can send with the help of response object okay so this entire stuff basically it's not like only this activity every, everything is actually uh, made for http uh, made by http request and this is http response so whatever you gonna send you will send with the help of not you tomcat will send with the help of response object and whatever you want to take you will take it from request object okay now servlet throws two kind of exceptions so first is servlet exception this is like a web-based exception if there is a problem in servlet initialization trigger 
or anything happens with the servlet and tomcat or any communication between them io exception if there is a communication between your browser and you ports and all, all sort of stuff then io exception will be thrown okay so we'll get the exception accordingly what kind of exception you receive one of the most important method is you can have multiple service methods inside a single servlet it's not mandatory to have a single service method so are you are you have a do get you can also have a do post method also okay there is no issue with that and finally the method is destroy so when servlet is uh, done with all the task servlet that whenever the jvm is shutting down okay destroy method will be called so this is like a finally method the servlet is terminated by calling destroy method okay so destroy method is responsible for let's say if you open the connection let's say if you open the file you are doing some operations with it or any variable nullify and all those you can do that with the help of destroy I am writing this out here but I am pretty sure I will not be able to call it. Uh, there are reasons for that I will tell you. Okay, so this is my first servlet. I am not doing any awesome logic here. Just printing out where I am, what exactly I am doing. Okay, so let's run this servlet. Uh, to run this servlet, you don't have a main method here so I cannot do this at right click and run as Java program I cannot do that okay it's it's not even giving me an option of running as a Java program right why because it doesn't have a main method so how do you run or what exactly the entry point the entry point of any servlet is URL so you need a URL to hit this particular servlet okay questions are coming when the register method is called on Tomcat is shut down, yes. Properly shut down, I will say. Okay? Properly shut down. Register method will be called. Okay. So now I need a URL to hit this particular servlet. Right? So URL to servlet. Now URL can be anything. Like you know that you have URLs like Amazon.com, Google.com and all those things. So for us the URL always will be the first thing in the URL always will be HTTP that this is what protocol I am using localhost this is the IP address of my machine and uh, IP address of your machine localhost is always where your uh, current program is hosted now 8081 that is my port you can use 8080 now you have to give the project name March web project this is also called as context name okay project name or context name now this is where you need a name of this particular servlet okay so this URL will be constant 